The father of Prince Gotama, the Buddha, savior of the Orient, determined to protect his son from desperate knowledge and tragic awareness, built for him an enclosed pavilion, a walled garden of earthly delights. Okay, so the, the story goes that an angel visited Buddha's father and said that he's going to have a son, and the son is either going to become the greatest ruler that the world has ever seen, or a spiritual leader. And the father, being a practical man, thought, well, there's no bloody way. I want my son to be some, like, wandering spiritual leader. I want him to be the greatest king that the world has ever seen. Okay, and so um, the father decides, how am I going to get my son to be the greatest ruler the world has ever seen, I better get him to fall in love with the world because then he's not going to go traipsing after some sort of half-witted spiritual knowledge. He's going to stick to practical tasks, right? That's something that a father should do to some degree is orient you in the world, right? And maybe you shouldn't subvert your, your spiritual development to any great degree, but there's a practical element to this. And and so anyways, that's how it works. And so that's what happens. The, the, the father builds this city of perfection and he eliminates from it everything that's re a reminder of the suffering that's associated with life so the only thing that's allowed the only creatures that are allowed to be in there the only people that are allowed to be in there are healthy young and happy people so the buddha grows up surrounded by nothing but the positive elements of life well you think well what does that mean well it's akin to the paradise idea obviously walled enclosure of paradise where there's no death but there's more to it than that too it's also in some sense what a good father would do what do you do with your young children well you don't expose them to death and decay at every step of the way right you you build a protected world for them like a walled enclosure and you only keep what's healthy and life-giving inside of it and you don't expose them to things that they can't tolerate you know maybe you don't take a three-year-old to a funeral now maybe you do but maybe you don't there's things that you don't expect them to be able to cope with you regulate what they're allowed to watch you're not going to show them the te texas chainsaw massacre when they're four years old right so so you're staving off knowledge of mortality and death and so he's just being a good father in many ways here all signs of decay and degeneration were thus kept hidden from the prince Immersed in the immediate pleasures of the senses, in physical love, in dance, and music, and beauty, and pleasure, Gautama grew to maturity, protected absolutely from the limitations of mortal being. However, he grew curious, despite his father's most particular attention and will, and resolved to leave his seductive prison. Well, it's that curiosity element. It's the same thing that lurks in the Adam and Eve story. It's like God tells Adam and Eve, see that tree over there? Don't be bothering with it. Well, you know what's going to happen with human beings, especially if there's a snake associated with it. They're going to be over there right away checking that place out. And that's exactly what happens with the Buddha. It's like he's raised to be healthy. And what is, what's the consequence of that? Is that the fact that he's healthy makes him look for what's beyond the protected confines of the thing that made him healthy. It's like, it's like even in the Geppetto story, you know, where Geppetto paints on Pinocchio's mouth and he's ready to go. He puts him outside the next day and Pinocchio's ready to run away with all the kids, right? So the consequence of raising a child in a healthy way is that the child is going to be curious enough to go out there and look for some trouble. And we actually know that because there is follow-up studies of teenagers. You imagine that there's teenagers who never break any rules. And then there's teenagers who break all the rules, okay? These teenagers don't do very well. Introverted, depressed, anxious, depressed. Sorry, I said that twice. These ones are antisocial. The ones in the middle, that's what you want. You want your damn teenager to get out of the paradisal confines of your house and to go cause some trouble and to investigate. Maybe you don't want to know about it any more than you have to. You don't want them to be breaking rules all the time and you don't want them to be so timid and oppressed that they can't make a move on their own and never make a mistake so the, the, the paradoxical thing here and it's sort of echoed uh, this is why i like these two stories back to back is